The Cinema Comunista is a feature-length documentary film that tells the story of, uh, essentially the story of how cinema in Yugoslavia was used to create a political narrative of the country. So it's very much an exploration of the role cinema plays in, in nation building or in creating a collective identity. <laughs> Uh, the story is told through basically the fortune and misfortune of uh, the national film studios, which were built uh, during communism, so at the beginning of Tito's reign. And it kind of follows the glory days of these studios and the state they're in now to tell the story of, of our um, past using cinema. <laughs> Dobar dan, ova firma iz Oteo. Dobar dan, iz Oteo, šta vam treba? Mome ne budite na vezi. It's quite well known in, in the former Yugoslavia that Tito loved cinema. But what wasn't really that well known to me, and it's something that I very much discovered going into the archives and going through his personal files, is how much he was not only involved in watching films, but also in, in the actual production of films. One of the central characters in Cinema Comunisto is uh, the man who was Tito's private projectionist for 32 years, so one of the longest serving members of Tito's personal staff. And um, this man basically showed him a film almost every single night. There is actual evidence of the fact that in these 32 years, Tito saw a total of 8,801 films, which is an extraordinary number of films. Svakog dana smo mi filmove gledali, prvo on je gledao, ja sam postao i... I kad ode negde, ja spremim, pa makro bi bilo poslije pola noći, on gleda film. The central film studios of Yugoslavia, which were called Avala Film Studios, are located in uh, very much the city center of Belgrade, up on a hill. And they were one of the first things that was created after the Second World War. There is a document that you see in the film, signed by Tito, that sets up the film studios. So he was very much involved from the very beginning. And these studios were quite extraordinary in that a uh, connection with Hollywood was established very quickly. So a number of major stars came to make films there, like Orson Welles and Nicholas Ray and Sophia Loren. And so there's a wonderful story that evolves about kind of the golden age of, of uh, European cinema also being, being shot at the Avala Film Studios. Samo primjera radi da vidite koliko je kvalitetno bilo što su radionice Košutnjaka radile za duge brodove. Ovo je kostim glavnog, jednog od glavnog vikinga koji je pravljen ovdje kod nas specijalno za film Dugi Brodovi. Initially it was um, cowboy films that were made there, a lot of spaghetti westerns, but then finally big uh, international co-productions arrived. And kind of the pinnacle of all these stories is the fact that these stars started acting in Yugoslav films as well. And in a very kind of extraordinary turn of events, there was a film made in 1972 in which Tito is depicted on the screen by Richard Burton. I was born a year before Tito died, so very much in, the, in this period of great political transition. I grew up in a Yugoslavia where Tito was revered as if he was still alive, but I was in my early teens when the war began. So I, I very much kind of am a member of a generation that saw Yugoslavia disappear and then saw a period of 10 years where uh, every memory of Yugoslavia was very violently erased. Particularly in Serbia, there was this whole thing of uh, the removal of monuments, the changing of holidays, of school names, of street names. So there was a very concerted effort to remove every trace of Yugoslavia's past. Um, and I kind of feel that my generation's role will be in reopening that debate. And for me, making Cinema Comunista was very much an attempt at starting a conversation, mostly a conversation about what kind of future do we have if we're so, con we're so insistent on erasing our past? So I think we have a right to analyze Yugoslavia and analyze it from a dispassionate point of view, something that our parents' generation has certainly never been able to do. But to look at the pros and the cons and, and to come to a, a, our own feeling of what Yugoslavia was, was it a big political mistake? Was it an illusion? Was it a country that should have had a future? So these are things that are popping up in a lot of young filmmakers' um, 
you know, interest right now. Mm -hmm.